I have completely redesigned my fingerprint smart lock and I've made some insane new upgrades. Starting on the outside, we finally have a brand new sleek looking terminal inspired by the one and only Trace Comas. This new terminal has a brand new fingerprint sensor and to answer everybody's burning question, I'm using a LiDAR sensor to measure distance, uh, not ultrasonic, <clears throat> but Shout out to the authors that wrote a couple articles on my first video. You guys tried your best. Stay tuned because I'm gonna show you how to make everything you see. Also on the outside of the door, I added LED diffusers in the form of PVC pipes I cut in half and they make the door look a lot classier and it helps with the issue where people were confusing my house for the local strip club. This lock is now impossible to pick because as soon as the keyway detects any motion at all, the circle immediately starts vibrating off and One of the original features that everybody loved was theft mode. We get this flashing red pattern. This alarms if the door is opened without scanning the proper fingerprint. Jitter mode now works hand in hand with theft mode, blocking lock picking attempts to begin with. Mr. Lock Picking Lawyer, if you're watching this, I formally challenge you to try and defeat this. Sometimes it's annoying when the door locks behind me when I'm running outside really quick to get something from my car or taking out the trash. So I added hold mode. All I have to do is hold the button down and the door will stay unlocked until the button is pressed again. Sometimes people will close the door and not realize that it didn't actually close all the way. This causes the servo to get jammed and the door wouldn't actually lock. Because of this, I added a feature where the lock will alarm if this happens and will immediately retract itself. So when a jam does occur, the servo motor stalls and a large impact load is imparted into its gearing, which can lead to these servos wearing out a lot faster over time. So to help the servo last longer, I basically just slowed it down quite a bit since there's really no reason for it to lock at full speed. I never thought so many people would want a tutorial to make something that you can buy online for less than $100. I guess you guys really like lights or something. All of my source code and the 3D files are in the description. A couple of warnings, this is only going to work if your deadbolt turns with very little resistance. These servos are not very strong. Here are the dimensions of my lock and deadbolt. If the measurements of your deadbolt are not the same as mine, you're going to need to make some corrections to the CAD files I have since obviously things will not line up. So a little bit of backstory here. This project was originally just a simple fingerprint lock and that was it. But over time, I added more and more things to it, like the buzzer and the LED lights, and eventually I added the LiDAR sensor so that it would light up as you approach the door. Adding all these things on top of each other created a wiring nightmare. Soldering a bunch of things on top of each other is a quick way to make fast prototypes, but doing anything else, like fixing any issues that arise, is just virtually impossible. Originally, I had the whole thing running off of one Arduino Nano board, and this works fine to run the fingerprint sensor and the servo and the lock, but when I added the LEDs, it would actually run out of memory. Amazingly, I had enough memory available to run about half of the LED strip, but obviously this wasn't going to cut it, so my simple solution was to just add another Arduino Nano. I had one of the boards run the LiDAR and the LED strip, and the other board ran the lock and the fingerprint sensor, and the two boards communicated via I squared C communication. And although it looks terrible, it worked great, and this is what my setup was in the original video. That being said, I figured that if I'm going to release a tutorial on how I made everything, I'm gonna build it right, and I'm gonna use only one microcontroller. 
This time around, I built a custom PCB by hand so everything is modular and much cleaner. And I used one of these Teensy boards, which are significantly more powerful than the measly Arduino Nano counterpart. Unfortunately, due to certain political actions taken by China, 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 there's now an international chip shortage, which means this Teensy board will never be available ever again. What use is it in me showing you how to build this on a microcontroller that is no longer available? I was doing some digging to figure out a suitable alternative and I came across these Seeduino Chow boards and they are so tiny, just as powerful as the Teensy board. I wish I discovered these sooner, I just can't get over how small they are. I was just gonna pour over my code from the Teensy board so that it would work on the Seed board and not worry about it since I've already spent so much time on this project, but based on some recent events with a certain submarine. I figured it'd be a good idea to do some testing. Soldering a PCB by hand has to be one of the most tedious and time-consuming processes, and in hindsight, I really should have just ordered a custom PCB online. The problem is, it's still pretty expensive to just order one. I linked a Google form in the description. If you're planning on building this, or at least thinking about it, definitely fill out that form because I want to gauge people's interest to see if it's worthwhile for me to order a bunch of custom PCBs in bulk since it's a lot cheaper if I get 10 or 20 or 30 of them. These LED strips are also pretty expensive when you order them on Amazon, but if you order them in bulk from like AliExpress, it's a lot cheaper. So I could theoretically make kits and actually reduce the total price of components. In terms of the actual parts you're gonna need, you're first gonna need a Metal Gear servo. For the fingerprint sensor, I initially used this optical fingerprint scanner, but it unfortunately broke after the first couple of months. It turns out that a couple of months set a world record for the longest lasting part made in China. I went through a couple more of these optical sensors until I decided to try a different fingerprint reader altogether. This new one is capacitive and it has a cool indicator ring light around it. It's also a lot faster, so I definitely would recommend this one, but this one only runs at three volts instead of five, so keep that in mind. For the lighter, I'm using this TF Mini. It's pretty amazing that LiDAR even works, especially at such short range, considering it's literally using the speed of light to measure distance. It works by projecting a small patch of infrared light, which is then timed to see how long it takes for it to return, just like a radar gun. You can actually see the small patch of light that the LiDAR uses on a camera, but it's invisible to the naked eye. This specific TF Luna sensor communicates to the microcontroller using UART or I squared C. I tried to set it up with UART, but I found I squared C to be a lot easier since I'm already running a fingerprint scanner, which also uses UART. Since I needed to run some of the wiring outside, I reinforced it with a copious amount of electrical tape and used hot glue to seal the ends. All insulated electrical wires are technically already waterproof, but the tape really helps add extra strength and protection against the elements. And no, there's no way that someone could bypass the lock by just shorting some wires together. The fingerprint library generates an encryption key every time the system restarts, which is used to encrypt the fingerprint data between the reader and the Arduino. You're also going to need a Hall Effect sensor so that the door will actually lock when it's closed. This means you'll need a strong magnet that you can tape to the wall as well. And finally, you're going to need an LED strip. I'm using a 5 volt and they have to be individually addressable. That's very important. And in order to power everything, I just used a pretty big 5 volt power supply. Mine is 5 amps, but anything greater than or equal to 3 amps should be more than enough. If you've made it this far, let me know if you have any other questions. And if you do want a kit or a custom PCV to make making this a lot easier, uh, definitely fill out the form in the description below.